Today I'm making Tori a little uh, drawstring bag tutorial. This is scrap. You guys have seen me make a ton of stuff out of this. It's a scrap. I've squared it up. I didn't measure it. It doesn't matter. I just folded it in half. Okay. Now, for time's sake, I have pre done, kind of, sort of, but you'll get the idea. So, the next thing I did was you turn down a little bit of a hem. I just eyeball this. You can measure it. It can be an inch. It can be. The only advice I have is if you're using um, one inch uh, ribbon or something, make sure that it's wide enough. Okay, you want a little lot wider than what you're uh, doing. And you're just going to press those back. Now, the key here is to press them to the outside. Okay, oops, I keep forgetting where the camera is. So, you're going to take it and just fold it down on itself and see the pretty side. And then you're going to flip it over, fold it down on itself and see the pretty side. You can tell these aren't exact, but it doesn't matter because I'm going to show you how to line it up on the machine and it'll do a nice, pretty straight stitch across there. So, we're going to press these two into place. Um, Right? And this really is simple to make, but it's all in the prep work and the pressing of it. Okay, next thing you're going to do is where you fold it down, you're going to take and make a little nip there. So I like to use my little snippers. They're just pretty handy. You can use scissors, whatever you've got. I don't recommend the rotary. rotary. If you use one of these, it tends to get in too deep, and then you've got a big gash across it. So you're just going to nip right here underneath this so you just have this little bit looks like a rip okay you're going to do that on all four sides again it doesn't matter if it's even not a big deal if it's a little off as a matter of fact just to prove my point this side is a little off um and you'll see okay then we're going to take and where we made those nips we're going to open this up and we're going to fold those nips in and fold it back down Okay, and that hides all of our rough edges, so we're going to fold this in, and then fold it back down. And then the key to always doing clean work, of course, is ironing it. The more you iron it, and the nice straighter the crisp fabric is, the better your item is going to turn out. So, we've done that one. Now it looks like this with these two little... Uh, notches out of the corners. Okay, one at each corner. You can barely see this one, but it's notched. And again, not perfect, but it's not going to matter when we get done. So then we're going to do the same thing on this side. Just fold over the part that you nipped. Iron it in. Fold this back down on itself. Okay. And again, that's just going to make those nice, clean edges. Okay. Now, to make this bad boy into a drawstring bag, it literally is going to be four seams. Okay. You're going to do one across this top, one across this top. You're not going to have, you'll have it open. Then you're going to close it up and do one across here and one right up there. Okay, so let's go over to the machine and I'll show you what I mean. And you can see these still are not perfectly lined up. It's not going to matter. Okay, so it's a drawstring bag. It's a gift bag. It's whatever. Not going to matter. Let me take you over to the sewing machine and I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so I'm over here at the machine and I found the best angle to show you. So I'm just going to line my fabric up, my fold, with one of these lines over here. I just eyeball it. Looks like the second one will do just fine. Alright, so you're going to slide it in just a hair more. And you're going to start with a reverse stitch, go backwards, and then come forward. All the time keeping this lined up, this edge, with the second line right there. Now, the reason that you don't go forward, go back, and then come forward, it will leave a little dip 
in your fabric. So I found if I just started in, go back a few stitches, and then come forward, it doesn't do that and it locks the stitch in place just as well. Okay, so I'm going to set it right about there. And I'm just going to start with the backward stitch. I go faster I can do it better but I'm going slow to show you so so there's the first one now we're simply going to do the same thing to the other side and again I'm going to line it up on the second one I'm not worrying about what's over here. I have fabric to sew to, so it's good. It's going to get narrower down here just because it's uneven. So we're going to start with the reverse. top one's done. Now we just have these right here to do and we're going to line up these two tops. We're going to raise our foot. I'm just going to raise my needle too and not lose my thread I hope. these two tops we're going to line it up as close to and you use the center mark in your foot and you're going to line that up there and then just slide it down again leaving enough that you can go backwards looks like I'm going to line it with the third line this time side to do and I'm not going to worry about it whether it lays flat or whether it lays anything the better you get at them the more they'll lay flat okay so again I'm going to line up now this is thinner on this side so I don't know that it'll come all the way over to the third but we're going to again raise that line this up right here go forward a little bit yeah this is going to be on the second one but it's just we're lining it up over to the table and I'll show you what you got okay so once I brought it over here I forgot to hit the record button for you but I uh, trimmed off just the little edges here I just took this and left about a quarter of an inch and just wrote it along there and then wrote it along there and cut it off the when we get further along and as I make these videos for you I'll show you how to hide this um, I'll show you how to do many things with it so that it doesn't you don't even see it but for a small gift bag this is fine okay also you want to nip off the corners which I did before I hit record unfortunately and again I just took my little nippers and nipped off the corner the only thing to be to remember is don't hit your stitches okay so just make it a little angle because that's going to take out some of the bulk out of your corners all right, so then we're going to turn it right side out and see that makes a really pretty corner. This is just a little cotton bag. It's not anything fancy. 
Okay, if you have a tight corner, an awl will get down in there. And I have an awl, I just, this is a thin, I tend to use more with the awl when it's thicker, so. All right, now, last thing we've gotta do is put our strings in there. So, here is, let me get this. Oops. Of course, now it's not gonna wanna go through. You can thread it with either end. Sometimes it's easier to get the pointy end because it's flat to go through some of these small drawstring bags. Um, okay, so just because it's smaller. Now what I've done is I just took some jute. I measured it twice across. It's gonna go one, two times across. And then I left some extra because you'll need a loop and you'll need some room to tie your knot. So I'm going to put this through here, that through there, and you will need two of these. Okay, so I'm gonna draw it through this side. Okay, and then it's going to go through the other side as well. And like I said, it's easier to get this through with the pointy end. I don't know why. Um, on the small ones, I tend to use the pointy end um, just because I can. I mean, it doesn't matter. As long as you've got the little eyelets on this side right here where you're going to be pulling. And even if you don't, you can do the other end and pull it through. So it won't matter until you get the second one done. Okay, so we're going to pull this on through. And we've got our first little drawstring through there. Okay, now here's the catch. <laughs> We're going to even it up and tie a knot. We don't want to move that, lose that. Okay, so. And this is probably the hardest part because now you got to do it so that the knot comes out the other way. Okay, so again, I'm going to run this through. And yeah, maybe I'm going to run it through. It's getting hooked on the other, uh, what do you call it? The other string there. The second one is always harder than the first, just saying. see it yet. Right. And some people have told me they do both theirs at the same time, so I don't know. All right, again, I'm just going to thread it. Oops. Thread it in there. You can do this. You can use ribbon. You can use nylon cord. You can use yarn. You can use anything you want. I happen to use jute because it's handy. And see, if I was smart, I'd be able to just run this through without getting, and then make the other side come through. But let's see if this is going to work. Where is it? Again, it's getting wrapped up in that other cord. see it so I will take this out and <laughs> do and what it is is this side is a little bit smaller and you can see it barely fits in there and then this one is big so but it's not gonna matter trust me um, once you see these done you will be like hmm can't even tell my mistakes okay so don't worry about that I'm gonna pull this on through Even this up, tie our knot, and boom. All right, and now we have a drawstring bag.
and it's cute for a gift in there. You can put, I don't know, any kind of, you can do jewelry, you can do your earrings, your stuff for travel, you know, whatever. So there you have it. Tori Marie, I expect to see your drawstring bag in the future. I expect some pictures to be sent so that we can show that this just taught you how to make a drawstring bag. So there's your first project. Let me know when you're done. Then I got another one I'm gonna post.